Hello everyone, my name is Amir Mohammed Mirzai and I'm going to share some parts of my research results with you. The topic of my presentation is an analytical study on pure motor debonding of composite to substrate joints by considering their residual strengths. After a brief introduction, I will talk about mathematical modeling of the problem then I will present the results and finally I finish my presentation with conclusions. Let's get started. Strengthening of existing structure by externally bonded plates has become an accepted method nowadays. One of the most common tests to study the debonding behavior of fiber reinforced plastic or fiber reinforced simultaneous matrix to existing structure under pure mode 2 is pull push test. As you can see in this picture, load directly applied to the reinforced and displacement of the block is prevented using this block. A typical load displacement for such a test also can be seen here. As you can see, after debonding, the load doesn't reduce to zero and it reaches a constant value. In this presentation, I am going to model this behavior as the ordinary models for debonding are not able to catch this behavior. In order to model the problem, we are going to use shear lag model, firstly proposed by Wilkerson. Based on this model, we ignore filling stress and just consider shear stress, which is quite close to the physics of our problem. To derive the governing equation, we choose an arbitrary element on the reinforcement and satisfy the equilibrium for this element. Then we satisfy equilibrium between the reinforcement and block. We, we assume that materials uh, obey a linear elastic behavior, so our constitutive equation would be something like this. Then we introduce a dimensionless parameter which represents the mechanical fraction of the re reinforcement. By using all of these equations, the governing equation would be something like this which tau of s should be determined. In this presentation, I am going to use three different constitutive lobes for the interface to determine tau of s. It should be noted that s is relative displacement of the reinforcement and the block. From the last slide, we have governing equation. Next, we need to determine tau of s. Here we use Lebin or linear elastic brittle interface model. Constitutive law for such a model can be written as tau s equal to kts if s less than equal sf or tau r if s greater than sf. sf can be calculated with this equation tau mox over kt. A, visual, a visualization of the model can be seen in this figure. As you can see, it starts with a linear part and drop and it reaches a constant value of tau r. In this model, it is assumed that the interface is a bed of springs with a coefficient of kt. Two reasons can be mentioned about why we consider the gray area as G2C or fracture energy. First, crack closure work for a vanishing step or energy analysis of the whole structure. As our governing equation, is a second-order differential equation. We need two boundary conditions to 
to determine stress distribution. First, can be traction free at free end of the reinforcement or x equal to zero. The other one could be force should be equal to F minus tau r to a to tr because we have loss of force due to the friction in the debounded zone. Using these boundary conditions, we could calculate stress distribution After knowing stress distribution along the interface, we can use a fracture criterion to determine fracture load. Here we used Griffith's criterion to determine the depending load. As you can see, based on this criterion, fracture or debounding occurs when G is its critical value G2C. The expressions for this criterion can be seen on the left hand side. Also, we use some parameters for normalization, for example, Fc infinity, which is maximum transferable load for sufficiently long bond lengths in the absence of residual strength. And LCH is the overlap length that endures Fc infinity if interfacial stress is constant and equal to tau c. Another important parameter is mu that contains some important parameter and in results we are going to talk about it. The model that we used in our analysis is equivalent level. Constitutive law for equivalent living is quite similar to living and the only difference is that here we have a fictitious stiffness k of f instead of k of t. After knowing the constitutive law, we can calculate stress distribution and as before, we use Griffith's criterion to determine the fracture or debounding load. It should be noted that in here, tau c is an important parameter, while in Levin, kt was an important parameter. last model that I'm going to present is cohesive crack model. Cohesive crack model is a well-known constitutive law in the literature and there are different kinds of it. Here I used rigid linear softening but for the sake of brevity I'm not going to in, the, in its detail. Constitutive law for this model is presented here and you can see a visualization of it in this figure. In this model also, there is a difference between short and large bond lengths. As in large bond lengths, the cohesive zone has enough space to fully develop. On the other hand, for each case, we need to solve the problem for two different phases. For long bond lengths, for instance, first phase is from B to D and the second phase would be from E to F. For modeling the first phase, we have traction free and no slip boundary condition at free end or x equal to zero. Using the using the equation that tau x equal to tau r, we can calculate the x1 and then A, which represents the debounding length. Finally, the load can be calculated using the integral of the stress distribution along the interface. In the second phase, which can be seen in Fig E, some points are in softening and other are debounded. So boundary conditions would be traction free at x equal to 0 and relative displacement at x equal to x2 would be SF. Then 
we should satisfy continuity condition for stress and displacement at x equal to x2 for both the bonded and softening part. Finally, fracture load can be calculated using relative displacement at the end side using this expression. After evaluating the stress distribution during the bonding, we can determine the maximum load of the bonding for different bond lengths. As the maximum load is usually the most important parameter. Maximum load for levium and equivalent levium can be calculated using the first derivative of the load with respect to the debonded length or A. During the calculations, we need to divide the solutions the solution for large and short bond lengths according to lambda limit. It is why for cohesive crack model, based on what was presented, we know maximum load for short bond lengths is in case I and for large bond lengths is in case D. Here you can see the equation for maximum load. In order to examine the accuracy of the models, we use the available data in the literature. For these experiments, the fraction of tau r over tau c was equal to 0 0.08 and mu was equal to 16. These experiments can be divided into two groups to investigate the effect of bond lengths and bond width. Also, we have done a parametric study and increase the residual strains up to 0.2. It can be said that by increasing the residual strains, maximum load during the bonding also increases. An important parameter called uh, effective bond length can be defined such that joints larger than uh, effective bond lengths can carry better fraction of the maximum load at the transition point. By transition point, I mean lambda limit or lambda limit that separates equations for short and large bond lengths. Uh, as Lebim wasn't accurate enough, uh, we haven't presented the results here. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you can see an important property property of the effective bond lengths is that beyond this length, there is no significant loading cream. In this picture, we have examined the effect of the friction on effective bond lengths based on the cohesive crack model. As you can see, by increasing the residual strength, the effective bond length increases. On the other hand, for the cohesive crack model, if we consider beta equal to 1, and then rewrite the effective bond length equation in dimensional form for the case of frictionless or tower equal to zero, we can achieve the proposed equation of Italian standard for construction for effective bond lengths. To conclude, we model full range mechanics of debonding of composite to substrate joints by considering residual strains. We used shear lag model with three different bond steep loads. Also, we propose some simple expressions to estimate the effective bond lengths. Finally, the results illustrated that equivalent labeling and coercive crack model can predict debonding with reasonable accuracy while the accuracy of the levying for short bond lengths was not really good. Here are some references that I mentioned during my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention and I wish you all the best.